All right, so welcome to the call, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, just the concept of KISS, which I'm sure you've heard as keep it simple, silly, or stupid is how you usually hear it. Um, but I've been talking a lot with some other leaders and just my own general feelings as well is that uh, that a lot of the business gets overcomplicated with, you know, like all the bats and the forms and the trainings and the things to do when really like when I plug in with top leaders and people that are in the place that I want to be, it, it's really, really simple. And they built it, you know, four or five, six years ago on things that we, they didn't have available. It's just like the more coaches there are and the more teams there are and the more leaders there are that there's everyone just adding all this stuff all the time. When I think we just need to continuously move ourselves back to basics. And I think that's not only going to help us as individuals, but it's going to help your teams grow because you are going to be able to take this to your teams and keep it simple with them and not overcomplicate it and not get a new coach and be like, okay, you need to do this list of a hundred things to be successful. When it's so much easier to be like, let's start with the vitals and this is what I want you to work on and tell me what you need help with and go from there. That's so much more simple than do this bat and do this and post on social media this many times a day and think about doing a like page and you need to invite a hundred friends this month. Like it's just, it's too much. So that's what we're going to talk about. So, uh, before I dive right into that, uh, I want everyone to take an oath with me. Are you ready? Okay. We are going to start doing this on every call and it's called the act oath and people that listen to Maxwell with me will know a little bit more about what it is and if not you'll become very familiar very quickly. The act oath is I am going to ask you at the end of this call uh, to apply what you learn. And I don't care if you just learn one thing. I just want you to apply it t starting tomorrow, starting tonight, starting immediately. I want you to apply it into your life. Uh, C is I want you to change something that we talk about. Identify something that we talk about that you need to change and own up to it. Say, I need to change this. I could do a better job with this. I, I'm going to change this in the coming future. Uh, immediately, take action. And then T, I want you to teach this, guys. I need you to take everything that you want to apply and change and that you love about the call and teach it to someone else. Teach it to your boyfriend, your mom, your brother, your coach, um, a challenger. Like, teach it to someone. This All this applies to different areas of your life, not just coaching. And... If you can take these things and teach it, it'll help you learn it better. And if you start to teach the, your coaches underneath you to do this act oath, they're going to keep teaching it along the lines. And it's just going to make our team that much stronger. So I, Kimberly, promise to ACT at the end of this call. I hope you're all saying it because I can't hear you. All right. Awesome. Okay. So. Starting off with back to simplicity, um, the vitals, the vital behaviors. I'm just going to say them like you've never heard them before. So just open your ears like you've never heard them before. Be a product of the product. Guys, drink your shake, do your workouts. That's it. Simple as that. Follow some good nutrition. You know, practice what you preach. Don't be posting about eating pizza and drinking wine and drinking beer and stopping for ice cream every single day of the week. Yes, we go out and celebrate. And yes, we celebrate by getting pizza once a month. I know Brenda's had a great post on that, like how she makes it special or it's her favorite or, you know, like, but it's unique. It's not like, oh, it's Friday night, I'm eating pizza. Like, um, your shake, like in, I did a sh I did a post with James today drinking a shake after school because James loves, all my kids loves a shake, but it's a great afternoon pick, pick me up for anyone. But the fact that I'll let my nine year old drink it says a lot about Shakeology and I talked more about what's in it, uh, why you should be drinking it. Uh, and I added value to it. Like I'm talking, telling people, you know, a lot of people, we think, okay, I've been drinking Shakeology for a year and I'm posting about it all the time. Everyone should know what it is, but there's lots of new people coming onto your page or starting to following more or notice you more. And they don't know what it is. They don't know why you drink it. They don't know why you continue to drink it. They don't know why you started drinking it. They don't know why you're going to drink it a year from now. You have to tell them, you have to explain to them and you have to appeal to all gyms when you do that. So 
um, I'll go too far off topic if I get way into that, but be a product of the product. Uh, and number two, invite, invite, invite. If you are not inviting, no one is going to know what you have to offer. They don't know if you have a free five-day group. They don't know if you have a $25 checkout Shakeology group or a 10-day group. They don't know if you have a 30-day challenge coming up. They don't know if you have a 60-day challenge coming up. And you can't invite to a challenge starting Monday, starting Sunday. You have, I mean, weeks in advance. Like I've posted things in the team about having kind of a marketing plan for the month, but like the beginning of the month, I'm already thinking about like inviting everyone that I want to sign up by the end of the month so that I have all month to talk to them. But you have to invite. You can't just post on Facebook and put a flyer up and expect people to flock to it and say, I want to join your challenge. It has to be a personal invite. Yes, sometimes they're going to be out of the blue, but in most cases, your list are people that you're forming, not forming them to death. Forming is finding out about family, occupation, recreation, sending them your message. A lot of these people you already know, so you don't have to go into all that detail. You just have to reestablish contact, be sending happy birthday messages. You know, my friend's dog passed away. I don't write on their wall. I send them a private message and I tell them I'm sorry. My friend went to the doctor to have a mole removed. I don't write on her wall like everyone else did. I go to her, I go to messages and I start a private conversation. I'm trying to start conversations with people so when I do send the invite, it's not like, oh, I haven't heard from Kimberly in forever. Like we have an ongoing conversation going on. Um, number three, personal development. If you're not doing personal development, you're going to quit this business at some point in time. I promise you. You're just going to quit. You're going to have no belief system. You're going to have no motivation in your ear. You're going to have no positivity in your life. You're going to let the negative Nellies and the drown that drown out all the good stuff, and you're going to get sucked into the 98%ers world of quitters. Like 98% of people quit. 98% of people don't believe in themselves. 98% of us have this mindset that, oh, I can't do that. That's for the two percenters. Well, guess what? Be a two percenter. Two percent of our team is probably on this call right now. Keep being that. Keep doing that. Keep, keep doing that and keep plugging into personal development. This call is personal development. It counts. Check it off. You did it today. That's all I'm asking you to do. Plug into YouTube videos. If you don't like if it's harder to read books, then get the audibles. Uh, there's so much to plug into. If you're ever like, I don't know what to listen to, Kimberly. Give me something to listen to. I'll give you something to listen to. Like, it can be 10 minutes or we can get you a book that we enjoyed um, to start reading 10 pages or 10 minutes every single day. Colleen says, I've been listening to Danny Johnson live on YouTube on my way to work. That's awesome. I actually have been plugging into... Um, the MP3s, if you go to Danny Johnson events, First Steps to Success, you get a recording of the entire weekend on MP3s. And I've been listening to my Orlando one, which wasn't even my last one in San Antonio, but she had a great workshop on Monday for home business owners. And as I work through that, I'll do a call on that. Probably our next call, I'll do more about that because um, it's an all day and obviously. So I'm through a couple hours of it. But I would just constantly re-listen to that stuff, and it's awesome, awesome material. So great job, Colleen. And then those are the three vitals, but you have to wrap them up in social media. So you have to be posting on social media, and that, I cannot emphasize enough, does not mean posting about Beachbody and vomiting about Shakeology and only talking about your workout and only posting about that kind of stuff. That's, that's icky. That's gross. That's, I, I mean, that's what I see. Uh, I won't throw anyone under the bus, but you have seen other companies and other that are marketing something else or selling another product. And like, that's all they do. And you just, ugh, like, I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to open your page. And all I see about is wrap this or put mascara on this or whatever, you know, like, and I'm sure someone says that about me at some point. I'm just throwing that out there. But I try to post it about it in another way. Like, so my kid's drinking my shake and like, you know, why I let James do it and post about cake balls today. Cause I do a lot of baking on the side as well. Um, but I try to share like, you know, going to my kids' soccer games and, you know, getting my hair done and like, um, J John doing my hair and, um, traveling, traveling with my family and 
funny post about my husband. Like he cut a Virginia tech in the grass this week, which was hilarious. But like, so I post stuff like that. Like I'm sharing my life. I'm sharing what's going on. And if you guys don't think your life's that exciting, you're wrong. Like you just have to share it. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this mind blowing stuff. Like I think you, you're over guessing yourself in all of this with, um, the whole social media part, but it's a great way to tie in being a product of the product, like showing your workout. And again, y'all get deeper. Don't just post a picture of your shake. Just don't post a picture of your workout. Why did you start with Beachbody? Like, how did you feel before? Get your story out there with like breadcrumbing and little bits and pieces here and there. Not all in one like giant mother post, but like, you know, sometimes I, t I, I often use the line, like, I know what it feels like to cry in dressing rooms. I know what it feels like to cry in my closet. Like, I've done it this year. Like, I've been in situations where it's like, why, why do I do this to myself? Why do I sabotage myself where, you know, six months ago, everything in my closet fit like a dream, and now I just want to, like, flip everything off in there when I go in there. So, like, I've been there. I understand that, but I talk about that, and I'm open about that. I'm also really open about why I started a challenge in the first place, like, how I was miserable, how I was on antidepressants and, you know, suffering from anxiety, how I didn't want to be close to my husband because I felt gross. Like, I share things like that, not all at once, but people need to know why you started what's changed since you started, why you keep going, why you're going to be here a year from now. And that shows them what they want to be a part of. And it's a whole separate thing with coaching too. Like as you get more into coaching or whatever you're in now, like, you know, maybe it's the community. Maybe it's you can pay your car payment on your own. For me, like I cover our mortgage every month. Like that's a big deal for people to hear and for people to see. Like they need to see what it's doing for you. And these are things that we have to share through social media. And I'm here to help you guys with that. And um, we can do more calls on that and learn more about that. Like, just give me feedback what y'all need. So, um, so all of this is very simple. Like, look, I went over it in 13 minutes. How simple is that? That's our business. Like, seriously, that is our business. That is what we need to be teaching. We need to ACT on that stuff, guys. We have got to teach that because if you are not doing that stuff, like you, that's it. That's the whole coaching business. And I'm going to break it down so it's even easier and less overwhelming as well. So um, the, the key is it's simple, but if it's not done consistently, you're never going to see a moment in momentum or progress ever. Okay. So here's the quote. It was a quote, actually. I forget who says it. I think it's right from Marie Forleo. I got a lot of this stuff, um, who I follow. I like her, Marie Forleo. Okay, it's simple, but if not done consistently, you'll never see any momentum or progress. Um, one thing that I always say is consistency equals trust, and I talk a lot about that with inviting in general, but as I was writing my notes, I was thinking, you know, consistency means a lot of things. Consistency does equal trust with people. Um, consistency also equals growth, and consistency also equals results. So if you are consistent, meaning you are consistently doing your vitals and posting on social media, people are going to start to trust you. They know that you're not going anywhere. They know that like you are in this. They know that Brenda is going to wake up and be a coach tomorrow. They know that Adrian is all in. Like she loves her new lifestyle. She's on a whole 30 every couple months. Like this is how she eats. She eats clean. Like they know that I'm going to be drinking my Shakeology. I'm going to like have my cup with me at the pool. Like th that, they know that that's happening, you know, because I am consistent as opposed to a coach who is all in for a month or all in for three months or all in for a year and then drops off the face of the earth for six months. That's not consistent. It's not consistent. So then when they come back onto the scene, okay, true. It's just, it's like, oh, are, is she doing it now? She wasn't doing it. True story just happened to me about 10 minutes ago. Someone wrote me and said, hey, Kim, have you ever tried Unique? Unique is like the fiber lashes and makeup and stuff like that. And I said, I have. Actually, I did a show for a friend earlier this year, or actually, I think it was last Christmas. I did a show for a friend, and I still haven't used all my free gifts. Like, because if I do a show for you, we are going to break some records. I'm going to tell you that because I get a little competitive for that. I always ask people, I'm like, so what's your best show? Because we're going to beat it. So 
but I don't do that for everyone. So we had this rockin' show for my girlfriend, and I still have not used all the gifts. I bought everyone mascara that went to um, Summit, try to use up all my free gifts, still have mascara out the wazoo. So anyway, she asked me that, and so that's how I left it. I was like, I still have free gifts, and she said, well, I am trying to meet a goal for this month, so if you'd like to buy something, did you just hear anything I just said? Like, I have all this free stuff. Why am, why am I going to buy something for you? And now you're making, like, doing the guilt thing. Like, we're not even close friends. You've never bought anything for me, even though I've invited you to a few things. Like, the whole thing was icky and whatever. And I, I wrote back nicely, and I just said, I didn't even know you were selling it. Like, I'll definitely keep you in mind if I need anything in the future. And then she wrote back and said, yeah, I just started back up again in July when blah, 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 blah. But what she said right away to me was, I used to do it, and then I quit, and now I'm back. And that's why I didn't know she did it, because she's not consistent until she wants something or wants to hit a goal or whatever. That's icky. That's not building any kind of relationship. And I realize she's trying to sell mascara, and we're trying to change someone's life, which is very, very different when it comes down to our product. But the way you communicate with people is the same. So don't go that route. Um, but the consistency equals trust, like the consistency with your inviting adds up. It turns into your business growing. It turns into great results. So we're going to focus on consistency the next 15 minutes of the call. Hold on. I'm going to mute someone. Okay. Oh, another one. Oh, all right. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, Okay, so listen to this. Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally. It comes from what you do consistently. So you can't do the vitals one day a week. Can't eat clean and drink your shake one day a week and push play once a week and expect to lose weight. You can't do it once a month. You can't just sit down to invite once a month. I know I do all my invites at the beginning, but that means you have to then follow up with them. You have to, you know, check in on them. You have to kind of give them a little nudge and invite them again. Like it's a whole month process. I just get the initial invite out there at the beginning of the month. But um, it's not what you do occasionally. Like people that, if, if you eat pizza occasionally, are you gonna gain weight? No, if you eat pizza every day, are you gonna gain weight? Yes, just letting you know. If you drink your shake every day, are you gonna see better results than if you drink it the people that tell you, well, I just drink it like every once in a while. Well, you can't. It's not, I mean, if you're sick and they give you medicine, you don't get to just take it on Wednesday and Saturdays. You have to take it every day. It's the same thing. Shakeology does not work in the bag. This is what I've been telling people lately. I don't think they know this, but it doesn't. You have to put it in your mouth. So be sure to let people know that. Um, Okay, so I have five secrets to consistency for you, and I better speed it up because I'm being long-winded. Secrets to consistency, five. Number one, keep your eye on the why. If you do not have a why and you do not have a vision, you're going to have no drive and no reason to even stay consistent. And you don't have to have this big, amazing why and big, amazing vision especially starting out because I did not, I did not for a year. I was like, what? I don't understand this whole why thing. Like, I don't know why Summer wants me to cry when I talk about my why. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what she wants me to say. Like, I don't know what to do or what to even think about. I was like, I'm just having a really good time. Like, I like having my little goal of SC5 and I check it off. I like all the girls I'm meeting. I like all the trips we go on. Like, that's what I was motivated by. So my why was I was enjoying it. I was getting in shape. I was having fun. And I wanted to keep doing it. So I did. Now, when I really started to expand my vision, it, it did get bigger. Like, and it is getting bigger. And it still is. Like, because, and I th think we hold ourselves back sometimes with what our vision is because we don't want to fail. So and I was thinking about, I had a soccer game right before this with the boys and I was thinking about a quote. Um, and I'm sure some of you have seen it, but it's like, you know, um, darling, what if, what if I fall? And it's like, well, what if you fly? You know, have you heard that? What if I fall? What if I fly? I know you've seen that in different places. So many people have in your mindset, like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be the top 2%. I'm not going to be 15 star diamond. I'm not going to be in the millionaires club. I'm not going to make six figures. And you know, Maybe that's setting our sights too high, right? 
right now. Like I, I'm getting to that point where I, I see that as a goal or part of my vision. But for a long time, it was just like, oh, I just want to make, you know, like kind of a, you know, a good income and pay for my mortgage and pay for vacations. And now I'm doing that. So you always have to be increasing your vision and increasing your goals. And when you do keep your eye on the why, um, then that's the direction you're going to go towards. So if you don't really have anything that you're hitting for or aiming for, just like when you, um, like if you're saving for a trip, like if you're trying to save money, um, for a specific trip, like, oh, I'm going to Disney or I'm going to Hawaii and I need X amount of dollars. Like that's your why that's like, I have to put this amount aside to do that. Like you're motivated to put into that fun or like I'm going on a cruise in March and, um, apparently Hunter's goal for me and Megan is to be in a bikini. So I should work on that. So if that's my goal to be in a bikini for the cruise, like I have to start thinking about now what goes into my mouth and what when I push play and when I don't, I don't get to think about it like right before that, but that's my why. So that's what keeps you focused. If you have a why like that, then it will keep you from getting the extra junk food or skipping a workout or whatever the case is. So I just want you to focus on having a why and keep your eye on the why as number one, as, um, your first step of consistency. So number two is to pick your battle. Uh, and the key is to pick, a battle, not pick your battles, pick a battle. So I'm going to refer it back to the vitals. Pick the one that you're really not good at or struggling at, and let's see how we can improve it. Let's see how we can make it a little better um, or to make it a habit. Or if you even, even need, want less of a challenge and you want to take the one that you are good at and you want to perfect it for the next week or two with me, then let's do that. But let's pick one where it's like, you don't have to worry about it. It's like, I don't ever have to say, Hey Jen, did you drink your shake today and do your workout? Like if you're good on that, like you're good on that because once that's a habit, it's going to be so much easier to go to the next thing. So I'm personally good on PD. Like I get PD in every day. It's not something you have to ask me to do, but could I get better at working out, like I drink my shake, but being more consistent with my workouts, completing programs, sharing results, having actual results, those sort of things, absolutely. So like right now I'm on Whole30. When I do Whole30, I'm all in. I share my journey. I share my food. I talk about it, but I could certainly be better at my workouts still. So that's something that would be my battle. My battle is I need to get back to where I know my fitness should be. Maybe your battle is invites. Maybe you don't send invites. Maybe you don't sit down and make a list to even invite and you're just kind of willy nilly, you know, hoping the universe sends you people that want to sign up with you. Um, maybe yours is posting on social media. Maybe you don't do that. Maybe you do it once a week. That would be considered inconsistent posting on social media. Consistent posting on social media is honestly two to three times a day, guys two to three times a day. There's lots of um, things that you can schedule it through Facebook. You can schedule it off of Facebook through things like um, Hootsuite and Buffer. I don't do any of that. I do it all live, but a lot of people need that convenience, especially if they work a full-time job or have a different schedule. Um, but things come to me and I just post them on there. So do I struggle sometimes and feel like, oh, I have nothing to post? Absolutely. And do I have days where I don't post two or three times a day? Absolutely. But I am consistently on there. It's not like, do you have, do you, have y'all ever had friends where you're like, where did so-and-so go? Like, she used to post all the time. Like, is she even on Facebook anymore? And then you go and they like close their account because something dramatic happened. I'm taking a break from Facebook. Like, I can't do this anymore. Well, they are inconsistent. Like, they're you know, like in love with Facebook one week and not the next week. Like, you have to be consistent. So pick your battle, whatever it is from the vitals. That's something that, you know, after the call you can, I would love to see people's ACT what they're going to apply, change, and teach, and um, any of these questions that we're talking about. So if there's a battle that you want help with or some accountability with, let me know. You can, you're welcome to text me and tell me to get off my butt and do my workout. Okay, number three, um, schedule it. So Stephen Covey, uh, big scheduler, planner, pads, all that kind of stuff, not planner pad, but you know, Stephen Covey, um, 
planners. Um, he said, don't pri prioritize your schedule, but schedule your priority priorities. Let me say that again. Don't prioritize your schedule, but schedule your priorities. So instead of this comes down to like, are people making your schedule or are you making your schedule? Do you wake up every day and say, here are my vital behaviors and I need to check them off? Or do you have like this crap ton of stuff to do that's like, do this, do that, make cupcakes for this and do that. And like a bunch of stuff that maybe shouldn't be your priorities, depending on what your why and your vision are. Because for me, working, working at the PTA this year was not going to get me towards my why and my vision with this business and growing my income and, you know, saving more money for my kids' college education, saving more money for me to pay off my mortgage, you know, in seven years instead of 15 years. Like I have whys like that, that I want to get out of the way and have financial freedom. And being a part of the PTA isn't going to do that. Does that mean that I can't be active in my kids' classes and participate and show up and have lunch with them and be the best stay-at-home mom that I can be? Absolutely, I can do all those things. I just couldn't take a committee role this year. So I stepped back, and that frees up hours for me to do my priorities, which are these vital behaviors, these calls, digging in with my team, and that is going to get me towards financial freedom, not being the head of spirit wear for PTA. See how those are like things that I'm not letting someone rule my schedule. If you love PTA guys, go ahead. Like I need someone to do it. So we need people to step up and do it. So I'm not saying like we all have our thing, but I've done that. Like, I don't even know if Blaine's on, I don't know if Blaine's on the call, but she has, she's like head of PTA all the time and head of cooking for life and does all these charity things. And this year has been a big year for her to step back and now she's diving into coaching. But I know that she couldn't do that if she wasn't stepping back from other of those things. But I think she has a bigger why, a bigger vision that those things just aren't going to get her to at this point. So our whys and visions change, you know, and mine might go back to being really passionate about um, the cancer society and getting back more involved in that. Cause that's something I enjoy, but it's just something, a shift in your priority. So Who's scheduling your time? Make sure that you're scheduling your time. You're scheduling your vital behaviors in your day. And you're, um, that's a big part of, you know, having a power hour and having business hours. Like, if you just want this to be a hobby, that is fine, guys. It is a fun hobby. It is a great hobby. You can make great hobby money. I'll cheer you on nonetheless. But if you want it to be a job, people that have jobs have hours. They don't get to choose when they want to do their job. They have a time and a place and a set thing that they have to do. And yours gets to be flexible, which is awesome, but you have to have hours. You know, is that before you go to work? Is it after you come home from work? Is it in the middle of the day? Is it like, what is it? Map it out on your schedule. Get a little planner. Five to six, power hour. I am inviting. I am following up. I am posting on social media nine, noon, and five, like put it down, check it off, be intentional with your time. Okay, number four. Oh, I have to go fast. Number four, ignore your feelings. And um, the advice I got all this from Marie TV, but she said just this once, I usually don't tell people to ignore their feelings, but um, the feeling that you need to ignore is the voice that says, well, I don't want to do it. I don't want to work out. I don't want to send invites. I don't want to read personal development. I don't want to do that. I just want to watch TV. I just want to watch Flip or Flop. Chopped is on tonight and I have not seen this one. I do not want to do it. Wah. Ignore those feelings. Those feelings are not going to get you to your goal. Those feelings are not going to get you to Success Club 5. Those feelings are not going to get you in a size 8 jeans. Those feelings aren't going to do it for you. So get over it. Just do it. And remember what your why is. Go back to your why. The number one thing that's going to keep you consistent is why you're here, why you want to change, why you want to change your body, why you want to change your finances, why you want to change other people's lives. Like, why are you here? Okay, number five. Uh, I really like this one is the last one is catch that wagon. 
And what that means is um, you don't have to have an all or nothing mindset. And this is something we talk a lot with Maxwell as well, is emotionally sound and stable people do not need instant gratification. They get the big picture. They look longer term. You are not going to be an overnight success at this. You are not going to lose 30 pounds this week, and you are not going to make $30,000 next month. It's not going to happen. And I loved the video I shared earlier this week with um, Summer talking to Carl Deichler. I loved what Carl said when he said, this first couple years in the business can seem like volunteer work. I was like, that's awesome because that is so true. Sometimes I definitely feel like we're running just these volunteer groups. It's like, ah, you want to drink Shakeology? You don't. You want to cancel it? You want to do this? Like, that's okay. I'll just show up. I'll just keep coaching you for free. I love it. You know? It's, it is, it's a labor of love, but it builds up and you are changing people's lives and those single success stories make it all worth it. But so going back to catch that wagon, you don't have to have an all or nothing mindset. Don't think if you fall off the wagon that you can't get back on. Don't think if you get inconsistent with social media that you can't pick back up and get back on. Don't think if you had a bad week, a month of inviting or week of inviting, don't have a bad month, but if you had a bad week of inviting or a couple weeks that you can't just jump back on. My first two weeks of this month have really stunk with inviting. And then there was like this moment where I realized like I better get my stuff together. Like I just, it just kept getting later and later. It was like the eighth and the ninth and the 10th. I'm like, maybe I should send some more invites. Like maybe I should get my stuff together. So I, I had that moment, but I caught the wagon. And here's the key. Even though I fell off the wagon, I didn't let it get so far that I couldn't see it anymore. Don't fall off the wagon and not work out for three months. Unless you've had walking pneumonia, that's okay then, Kelly. Um, but don't fall off. Like if you have surgery, that's okay. I'll give you that. But like, I can't not work. Like I've had, well, I've had like a week, a whole week where I don't work out. And I'm like, what are you doing, Kimberly? Like, how are you not working out for a whole week? But I don't let it turn into like two whole weeks or three whole weeks because then it just gets harder and harder to get back on. It's the same thing with your vitals. If you don't invite for that long, if you don't read PD for that long, if you don't post on social media for that long, if you stop doing your workout, stop drinking your shake, it's just so hard to get back on the wagon. It's the same with our challengers. So it, all of this stuff relates to them and it's something that we can teach them as well. So um, if you fall off, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. You just need to get back on. Just don't let it get so far out of sight that you just give up because then that's just a shift in your mindset. So, whoo, can't believe I fit that all in. All right, so those are your secrets to consistency. One, keep your eye on your why. Two, pick your one battle. Three, schedule it. Four, ignore your feelings, just this once. And five, catch that wagon. So those are the things that I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on um, keeping it simple, doing the vitals and doing them consistently because it doesn't matter if you do the vitals like once a week or on Mondays like if you don't do them every Monday or every day like they don't they don't need to take a lot of time guys they a power hour a power half hour i honest to god honest to god when i started working this business did 15 minutes a day and it was usually watching a youtube video just to learn more but i will say that knowledge is key but with action useless. You can spend all your time, you know, like I know there's a brand new coach that was in there. It's like, I'm just trying to learn it all. You're never going to learn it all. Like I, I probably know this much of what we need to know, like that's coming. You just need to know to get you to the next step in front of you. You just need to know what an invite looks like. And then you need to send one. You just need to know a good personal development book or YouTube and then watch it. You just need to know the next program that you want to do or how to up your game with your nutrition or how to help someone create a meal plan or meal prep like all those things you're going to learn along with people so um let me read these comments see if there's a if anyone wants to say that you can unmute yourself what if you said thanks but no thanks megan i have no idea to what I have to go to the other call thank you you're amazing me too okay i know there was another call Megan, you want to say anything? 
Um, the thanks but no thanks was your uh, unique party. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I just said I have like a hundred dollars in free stuff. I don't think I want to pay you money, but thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Anything else? Anyone want to say anything? Go ahead, honey. Um, so I've been listening to, um, oh crap, I can't think of the name of it. One of those books that Summer Tucker recommended that's similar to, uh, Megan, what am I reading? Uh, <laughs> anyway, so he talks about deciding and like if, five frogs are sitting on a lily pad and one decides to jump in, how many frogs are going to be sitting on the lily pad? And your answer is five. So it's about more, yes, the slight edge. Yeah. It's about more than just deciding to do something. It's about making sure you're actually doing it. And that really struck a chord with me because I was like, well, I know I want to do all these things. I just haven't been actually doing them. And so I think that when you said the action thing, I think that really makes a huge difference. Like you can't just think about doing it and decide you're going to do it. You have to actually act on it. Yeah. I'm writing that down because I remember that, but that is so, I remember reading that forever ago, but, um, that's awesome. Crystal. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to jump in, but you don't actually do it. Like we're just not actually doing it and we are doing it. We're on this call. I know we're all have the momentum to go in the right direction. But guys, I can't stress enough how much we have to teach this stuff to coaches underneath us, like, and not overcomplicate it, like keep it simple. Like they can do this because if it becomes complicated and unfun, how are we going to convince anyone to do it with us? And convince might be like the wrong word. I'm not trying to like, you know, brainwash anyone into being a beach body coach, but like, how, how am I going to draw people in if you always look like stressed and it's hard and it's complicated and it's this and it's that, like, I don't, certainly we don't want us to look that way on social media. Like that's a huge no, no on social media is posting anything negative. Yeah. I mean, crap happens. We have bad days. We have this, but you know, who, you know, what I'm talking about like you have those friends on Facebook. They're like 